And there was given me a reed, like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. The English word and that begins this verse is actually represented in the Greek as the word kai, which is commonly translated and, or also, and even. A few examples of its occurrence elsewhere would be as follows. And this is important to the context given that chapter divisions were not in the original text. This is a continuation from the account given in chapter 10 of the mighty angel possessing the gospel commission. And this mighty angel is the giver of this reed, even if the translations are vague. The Greek word translated, there was given, is didomi, which means just that. And here are a few examples. The Greek word translated, me, is moi, which is the common reference to the self, such as I, me, mine, or my. A few examples taken, taken exclusively from the book of Acts are as follows. In fact, one notable mistranslation of this word is when the Gospel of Matthew tells of Jesus calling Matthew to be a disciple. We read, And he arose and followed him. And so here in Matthew 9.9, 9, this is actually a mistranslation. The meaning should be that I arose and followed him. And therefore this phrase in Revelation chapter 11 is properly translated, but it might simply have been translated, gave me. And for this reason, the phrase appears to have lost its context due to an unfortunate chapter break. Looking to the last verse of chapter 10, we can determine who it was that gave John the reed. Clearly, the same mighty angel gave John the reed. While the New American Standard Version inserts the word measuring, well, there is no Greek equivalent in the text. The Greek word translated reed is kalamos, which is first used in allusion to John the Baptist. What went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? And we also find this to be the Greek word that is employed when the prophet Isaiah is quoted, a bruised reed shall he not break. And the same Greek word factors prominently in the sufferings of Christ. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. And we find this Greek word used in respect to the means used to afflict Christ. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And so we find that a reed was used as a mock scepter to humiliate Christ and that the same reed was used to strike him. And we also know that the striking of Christ figures prominently in prophecy. And so we have the suggestion that what is expressed in Re Revelation chapter 11 touches upon this prophetic principle of the striking of Christ with a reed used as a rod. The inference appears to be that the gospel commission shall itself involve the striking of those commissioned with the commission of Christ. Isaiah prophesies, Hath he smitten him as he smote those who smote him? Or is he slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him? And while the syntax of the English translation of Isaiah 27.7 may be awkward, what well, the meaning appears to be that the smiting of Christ shall take on a prophetic principle, so as to repeat in those coming after. But apparently a reed was also a common measuring device in ancient times. Later in this book of Revelation, we find a very similar reference. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city. That a reed is used, rather than a measuring line, which might be considered more common as a device to measure th something so large as a city or a temple, well, lends weight to this item as bearing allusion to the measurement being conducted by suffering and by correction, and that at the hands of men at the hands of men, because the rod is a common prophetic allusion to that form of chastisement wielded by men. Recall the prophecy, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. The act of measuring the temple of God indicates judgment going forth in the church, 
at such time as the proper standard is presented before the spiritual eyes of those called to salvation. And the Greek word translated reed signifies a grass-like plant that grows in wet places. Recall Matthew 11:7. What went you out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? That this word for reed constitutes a comparison to John the Baptist suggests an allegorical connection to the Elijah ministry that is characterized by judgment. However, one problem with this interpretation is that the Lord rather, rather seems to suggest that John the Baptist was not merely a reed shaken with the wind. John made stalwart demands for immediate moral righteousness. His ministry, unlike those we see today, was very unyielding and authoritative. If John's evangelistic ministry was a reed, well, it was very firm and unyielding. And indeed, we are exhorted to arm ourselves with a mind to suffer, which is what John certainly did do. And so the reed factors heavily into the principle of suffering for the gospel. Our forebear, Jesus Christ, was forced to hold a reed as a mock scepter in order to ridicule the idea that he was any true king, and he was then beaten with the very same implement. And still later, they used a reed to administer to him vinegar for his drink when he was on the cross. The Greek word behind the English word rod is rabdos, and occurs normally within the context of a bludgeon. The word appears once in each of the first three Gospels in the context of the Lord's instructions to those he sent out two by two, saying, No script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. While we might think of this reference as a walking stick, well, this does not appear the primary meaning. Able-bodied men would not require the use of a walking stick. Rather, a stave was a means of self-defense. Considering the times, they didn't have 911. They didn't have telephones. They didn't have handguns. The carrying of a cane or a walking stick was something of a pretext for the carrying of a weapon in self-defense, commonly fastened with a cord around the wrist to prevent it from being taken away in an altercation. Therefore, when they traveled, they would have some provision for their own self-defense. The Lord is telling them not to make provision for their own protection. And after this, this Greek word is used by Paul in his letter to Corinth, where we read, What do you desire? Shall I come to you with a rod, or with love and a spirit of gentleness? And therefore, again, the word is used in the context of a rod as a bludgeon, a means by which to assert force upon another, a principle opposite to that of gentle fellowship. Thereafter, we find the word used in, in the book of Hebrews, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. There is a rule and authority of God that is symbolized by a scepter. And the scepter itself is only a symbol in that it constitutes a glorified rod, symbolizing the authority to rule. And God has given Jesus Christ all authority through which he may bring force to bear upon created things. And this word scepter, or rod, is also the Greek word used in the promise made to the overcomer, that he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken. Christ was beaten with the rod of men, and he was given the rod of all authority over men. And so what does this rod, that is the authority over all things, signify? Well, the righteousness that is the sanctification by the Spirit of Christ. And this is what is produced in the Word of God. Created things have no relative viability in respect to what is eternal, that is, that is of God's Word, that is of Christ. And this is the inheritance of the elect. The rod stands as the implement of judgment, both judgment for correction and judgment for wrath. However, the meaning in Revelation 11.1 1 is clearly that of a rod to be used as the implement of correction and rebuke. And so, this first verse of Revelation chapter 11 alludes to the judgment that must follow the acceptance of the gospel, and judgment as a purifying and perfecting work upon the church, as we shall see as we study further.